So we've just muddled our way through a bunch of exercises for some basic functions involving strings, some functions that, uh, frankly, uh, are pretty common uses of strings. So appending one string to another, copying one string into another, uh, determining the length of a string, the kind of operations you'd probably need to do a lot and you don't want to have to keep writing the same function for. And so, maybe to no surprise, it turns out that the C standard library actually has your back there. There is string.h, full of all sorts of neat functions, of which these are only a couple of brief examples um, of, that work with strings. Uh, so let's talk about those just for the congruence. And I think the one you're going to want to use the most is this one. I always read this as string length. But strlen is a function provided by the standard library to give you the length of a string. And just like we've been doing, the length doesn't include the null terminator. So the length of this string here would be 9. Uh, there's also a function called string copy. So I don't know why they didn't seem to have invented vowels in the 70s or something like this, but I pronounce this as string copy. Um, the string copy function does something pretty much identical to the function we wrote in the previous video, uh, which copies a string. And just like that function, the destination is provided as the first argument. And when I learned C, I really couldn't stand that. I thought, shouldn't it be source, then destination? That seems like the you know left to right. I think the designers wanted it to sort of look like an assignment statement where you put the thing, the destination goes on the left. So here's the string copy function. And then there's also this, stir cat, which is the equivalent of that string append function that we wrote. Okay, so why is it called stir cat? Uh, cat is uh, short for concatenate, which is a technical term for append, or in this context, take two things and mash them together. There's also this function here, which is actually in uh, stdio.h, um, and the reason is because it's a, it's a printf variant. It's often really helpful for when you want to construct a string with lots of formatting in it. So suppose I want a string that contains things like um, a number that's been converted uh, to text, or this floating point value, or in fact another string. You can actually use printf and have it as its destination put the result into a string as opposed to printing it directly to the screen. It's called snprintf. We don't generally need that very much in this course, but it's here because maybe you'll need it later for something or maybe you will need it some other time in this course. The first argument to snprintf is where you're putting the result. The second argument is how big that is, just so that snprintf doesn't accidentally fill it up with too much data. And then you give it the usual printf arguments, a formatting string, and then all the stuff to go into the formatting. So we'll try running this. There we go. Unlike things like the math library, you do not need any extra flags to use string.h. Um, and then we'll try, there we go. So the length of S1 is 9, the length of S2 is 25, just like with the examples we saw earlier. So it's the same strings as earlier. Uh, if I use stir copy to copy S1 into my output array, I get the string raspberry. If I then use stir cat to append the contents of S2, I get this thing, just like we got with our string append example before. And then finally, if I use snprintf, I, I want to have my string contain the result of this sort of thing, this formatting string applied with the usual printf algorithm. The string ends up containing this. i is 6, f is 1.11, and then a bunch of zeros. And then s1 contains, and then the percent s gets expanded out to the word raspberry. And that all gets stored in the string s out. So to be clear, this line isn't printing any output. This line is um, formatting some output and then putting it in a string. And then on the next line, I print that string out to demonstrate that. Um, so snprintf is actually very powerful if you want your string to contain formatted text. There are a lot of cases where you want to do the same formatting as printf, but you don't necessarily want to send it directly out to the screen. You want to send it somewhere else. And snprintf is one pretty easy way of doing that. The rest of these, I would say you're going to want to use strlen, string length, a lot in this course. You probably will need string copy and string cat too. Maybe string copy more than string cat. There are a few other things in um, string.h. I'll put them in the notes, but for the most part, we don't generally need them very much. Although if you take a later course that works with C, you will discover that you do a lot of text processing in C because a lot of programming does require processing text.